This video is sponsored by bridalfabrics.com. Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. So today is part two of my DIY wedding dress series. If you haven't seen part one, click here. I have showed you guys in this video how I create the sewing pattern as well as cut out the fabric. Um, in today's video, I'll be showing you guys how I got up to this point here. So how I did the face layer, the overlay, how I sewed the seams, how I started draping the um, appliques on here, the lace appliques, as well as the illusion neckline. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, stay tuned and let's get sewing. Okay, so I'm going to start with assembling my bodice. I have all of my bodice pieces cut out and interfaced. I chose to interface them rather than underlining because it would be quicker for me and I'm so behind on all of my deadlines. So I interface them. I'm just sewing them down their princess seams and this is what it looks like once the front bodice is assembled. And then I snip some notches into uh, where the curve is and press it open so it's nice and flat. Now I'm assembling my front skirt. I'm pinning together all of my notches. And then I'm just going to go ahead and sew down the princess seams on both sides for the front and the back. And then I'm going to take it to my ironing table and press all of my seams flat. You want to make sure that you're pressing in between assembling things that make things harder to press. Just so you make sure that you have good, um, your areas are nice and pressed well. Excuse some of these wrinkles here. Um, I just recently learned that it's better to um, interface without steam than with steam but unfortunately I learned that after I had already steamed this <laughs> so um, when you're interfacing fabric make sure to turn your steam on the iron off um, I find that that gives you a better um, application than when your iron is steaming now here is the back I'm sewing first the center back seam and I left the whole bit open that I'm going to do to, um, to use to create the corset back. I left that open. So I'm just sewing from that point on down to the bottom. And now I'm sewing the princess seams of the back. So I'm sewing it the same way I did with the front. I pinned my notches and I'm just going to go ahead and sew down my princess seams. I pinned my notches because I want to make sure that I, my fabric is not shifting and creating weird buckling um, in the end result. I want to make sure that my seams are nice and And here I am sewing my side seams together. So once again, I pin my notches and I'm just going to sew the back skirt to the front skirt. Take it all back, hate the things that you said. Cause I wish you didn't mean it. Under attack, running far, far away. And I'd rather keep my distance. Okay, so this is what it looks like once I have the side seams sewn on the bodice and the skirt. I'm just indicating here that I'm going to take, have to take in either a dart here. I actually ended up unpicking my princess seam and taking that dart up into the princess seam, which I will explain later in detail. I also lost the footage for some reason of me doing the overlays. So it's the same as the skirt. I cut one layer of tulle and one layer of the snap and face organdy and just sewed it down the princess seams exactly how I did the uh, main skirt and I just added it onto the skirt now what I'm doing is basting the top of the waistline here we're just gonna pretend like we didn't see that <laughs> I'm basting the waistline here so that when I take it over to the sewing machine my overlay isn't shifting on me and making weird puckers not that that's ever happened now I'm sewing together my waistline seam so what I'm doing is I'm aligning my princess seams first and then I'm going to I line my notches that I have on the top of or well, the waistline of the bodice and the skirt just to make sure that everything is lined up perfectly. I'm a stickler for aligning my princess seams, but at the end of the day, it's really not that important because all of this is going to be covered with appliques, so there is some room for error here. So, like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and align all of my seams so my princess seams, my side seam, my back princess seam, and then I'm going to just sew with a centimeter seam allowance. To go ahead and secure the uh, bodice to the skirt now in my experience sometimes this is the seam that really goes really wacky on you so a word of advice would be to just baste this seam first 
and then do a fitting and make sure that it is in the your waistline is in the right place and then go back over it with a, a 2.5 millimeter stitch to make sure that it's locked in place and ready to go fabrics.com they have a wide variety of quality laces as well as woven fabrics that can be used towards your next wedding dress project if you are a designer like myself they also stock swatch books that you can stock in, in your salon so when your brides come in you can go ahead and show them the different swatches of lace and fabrics that they carry they are my go-to lace supplier for all of my wedding dress needs and i hope you guys check them out and love them as much as i do now let's go ahead and get back to the video so this is um the point where we're going to go ahead and start making our illusion uh bodice now this is super simple guys this is just the top of my bodice um my the top of my stretch bodice pattern in my measurement and i just cut it in the shape of my neckline and that's what this is so if you guys need help um, drafting a stretch bodice that will fit you for your illusion neckline, I will link a video right here for you guys to go ahead and check out. And that's all this is, guys. Super simple. Okay, so what I'm basically doing is I'm pinning the, um, the illusion part onto the main parts of the front of my bodice. So I'm pinning it down to the neckline and on either side of the bust area. So like I said, I pinned it in the middle. And then notice that I'm kind of pulling it and stretching it and pinning it right up underneath my stay stitch line there. And I'm going to pin that all around the neckline at the bottom. And then I'm going to go around on the top. Here I'm taking my measuring tape, my poor old measuring tape, and making sure that both sides of my um, neckline are even in height. You want to make sure that both sides are symmetrical because you will be able to notice and it will bother you. So make sure they're symmetrical. I'm just going to go ahead and make, uh, pull it down. A little bit more because it wasn't and now it is now I'm going to take my pin and pin around the top of my stay stitch all the way around including the side there I didn't sew the side seam on my mesh panel because it's not necessary here I think that's just gonna cause um, unnecessary irritation under the arm so I'll show you guys in a bit how I'm planning to finish that off but I'm like I said I'm just pinning on the top and the bottom of my stay stitch and I'd rather keep my And I'm going to do the same thing in the back. You want to pull it nice and tight so that it is like a second skin. And don't worry about the edges of the illusion panel here or well, the illusion neckline here. Um, we're going to finish it off and some of this is going to be covered with lace as well. So I mean, it's really hard to get this cut perfect, but um, you know, it gets better with practice. Now I'm cutting my illusion panel along my stay stitch line. You see that? So the pins, on the top and the bottom hold the, the fabric in place as I cut it along the stay stitch line. This is allowing me to make sure that when I take this off of my dress form and I put it right sides together with the top of my neckline, it's going to match perfectly and it's going to have one centimeter of negative ease, you know, negative downward pull on uh, both sides of the neckline. I'm showing you here that I put some Taylor's tacks uh, to tack my overlay down. And then I also tacked my overlay down to the back as well because I'm going to go ahead and do a, um, a corset back. Okay, and I also want to show you here that I did adjust the um, princess seam here to pull that uh, fullness into it. Okay, so here I have a large piece of lace that I just cut out in a kind of a rectangular shape following the pieces of applique so I'm not um, or motifs rather so I'm not cutting through them in hindsight what I should have done is cut out my um, the shapes of my pattern pieces in the shapes um, obviously going around the motifs so that we can do applique seams rather than me applicating it on like this but obviously well this will work for now um, but next time I will do it that way and I'll show a video on how I do that in my next dress tutorial but pretty much I'm just placing it on here, making sure that it's smooth in the front, that I'm just placing random pins all over the place. I had so many pins in this, guys. It was ridiculous. Um, I'm also going to pull the sides tight so it's kind of like a second. So it's kind of like a second skin onto the, the overlay fabric. And I'm just going to pin all over the place. I like to make sure that the skirt portion is smooth. 
I decided not to do the bodice um, appliques now because I need to finish off that lining first before I go ahead and put the appliques on the bodice. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to finish off the skirt, well the majority of the skirt um, down to the point of flare and then I'm going to go ahead and line it. Now the reason why I haven't finished the appliques that go over the tool part of the actual skirt and the back and everything is because I'm waiting on my glittery glue to come in the mail, which it is a loss and I'm very irritated because I paid for um, faster shipping and I'm still waiting for it to come. I cannot bring myself to hand sew this, guys. I just, I can't. So I'm waiting on my glue to come and as soon as my glue comes, I might actually have to order some more to just to see if that comes in quicker. So I go ahead and finish this off because I need to get this finished real quick and let you guys know that I will be opening my own bridal salon in May of next year so May of 2020 and I know you guys are probably thinking well what does this have to do with me well the education that you guys know and love here on YouTube will be brought in person to um, the bridal salon location so I'll be hosting meet and greets for us to go ahead and meet and you know learn new things uh, socialize with each other as well as weekly sewing classes for you guys to come and learn all of my techniques and the things that I do for wedding dresses in person. I am so excited to embark on this journey guys. I feel like it is way 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 past overdue. If you guys are interested in supporting me I will put a Kickstarter link below in the description box for you guys to go ahead and donate. Now I figure in my head um, I have almost 9,000 subscribers and if each of my subscribers only donates one dollar that's nine thousand dollars towards making this whole thing possible so if you guys could donate i would really appreciate it and obviously all of my free content will still be uploaded on a regular now regular basis on my youtube channel thank you guys so much for your support in advance now let's get back to the video now i'm working on the bottom of the appliques sorry guys my allergies are like on 10 right now so what i'm doing is i'm cutting um I'm cutting the, the empty space in between some of these motifs here so that I can get my applique to lay nice and flat over the, part, the point where the skirt flares out. Now I'm going to do that for the front and the back. When I get towards the side seam, I'm going to do the kind of applique seam kind of deal where I'm overlapping um, some of the back appliques to some of the front. And when I'm doing this, I'm constantly... <laughs> I'm, so I'm constantly... Um, fluffing out the skirt to make sure that my appliques are sitting right and you kind of want to snip um, all the way up onto the point of flare just to make sure that the, um, the, the lace is sitting nice on the point of flare and then I also went ahead and added more um, lace into this part but we're not going to finish this part this is uh, what I have for now we're not going to finish this part now because like I said, I'm still waiting on my um, glue to come in. So what I'm doing here is I have the tool layer, just the tool layer pinned to both sides of my pants. And what this is doing is creating tension, kind of like you would get on one of those embroidery tables, which I really need to invest in. And I was just pinning it and making sure, and I'm just pinning it, making sure that everything is nice and smooth. Now here I'm working on the lining, well, the, the most laziest lining layer of a wedding dress you'll ever find <laughs> the first thing I'm doing and if this is uh, for a client obviously you would put boning cases in this uh, at this point instead of doing what I'm doing and actually putting the straight steel boning onto your face layer which I think is okay my face layer is interface it's um, pretty hardy and I'm only sewing this just to the seam allowance so I'm sewing bones I'm sewing bones um, down my princess seams in the front and the back as well as my side seams and then I'm also sewing one single center um, bone at my center front line and I'm sewing that gripping just the um, just the interfacing layer and this would be a lot more inconspicuous if you had underlined so I would recommend you underlining if you're doing your boning this way I was going to put my boning onto my lining but then I realized I just didn't like the way the boning looked on the lining. I don't want to put on my wedding dress and see um, the kind of stitch lines of the bones. I want it to be nice and smooth. So I decided to go with this. And you actually can't see it from the outside. But obviously I know that the inside is really ugly. 
So um, I was, if it were a client, you would want to sew in sewing channels instead of um, hand sewing this in like this. But nonetheless, it was functional um, or it is functional and it looks great. It holds um, my bust up. And then we're going to go ahead and sew the cups in. Now, when I make my wedding dresses, I like to do two layers of cups. So here, this is my intermediate layer of cups. This cup just gives my um, bodice the shape it needs around the bust area. And then I also hand tack in push-up cups that will touch my actual body. Um, so there's two layers of cups, which give you the maximum amount, the maximum amount of support that you need for a gown um, of this magnitude. And when I know I'm doing a lot of hand sewing like this, I take my little pressing ham and I take out maybe 10 needles and I thread all of those needles before I start working. And I like a really thin needle that lets me bend it slightly and that helps me get it through the boning or any kind of hand sewing that I'm doing. It helps me really um, speed through it really quick. So that's a good tip um, to pre-thread a lot of needles so that you're not sitting there wasting a lot of time threading needles in between your stitches. And what I'm doing is just going through the seam allowance and then going through the boning. And I'm working my way back and forth, back and forth, making sure that my boning is um, nice and flat and centered. On my side seam, I just, not my side seam, I apologize. On my princess seam on the back, I decided to use quarter inch steel, spiral steel boning rather than the half inch that I'm using here. Because the back doesn't need a whole bunch of support. The back just needs to, um, the boning in the back is just to prevent wrinkles and it's to hold up the neckline pretty much. It's not supporting the bust, so it didn't need to be as robust as the quarter inch, the half inch boning that I use here in the front. So that's a good tip as well to use a thinner boning in the back so that you can sit and stand a lot easier and so that you can't really see the impression of the boning through kind of, you know, the butt part of your dress. Now I'm going to start sewing in my cup. Now I sewed in uh, all the bones and the cups on the other side of the dress just so I can make sure that um, it will work and it did. So I decided to record it now. So I have my cup here and it's not a push-up cup, it's just a regular sew-in bra cup, super thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it here on my um, the, the bust part of my dress and I'm going to place a pin and then I'm also going to use my measuring tape. Well, I didn't have a measuring tape, so I used a piece of boning and I'm measuring down from the top to make sure that both of my cups are placed into the same place and then I'm just going to place a pin there. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be pulling the um, outer fabric, the satin layer, really tight over the, um, the cup so that I know the cup is actually doing its job and not just floating there for no reason. So you want to really stretch and pull. And you see I'm going to unpin and repin over and over again just to make sure. And I pin it all the way around the cup. And after I pin it, I don't think I've got any footage of me actually sewing it. But I'm just going to do a really quick and um, close together catch stitch around um, the whole cup just to tack it down. And I just finished sewing in the rest of the bones throughout the whole bodice. So like how I did the other side. So I would finish sewing down the princess seam on this bone that I'm working on here. I would sew my half inch bone down my side seam and my quarter inch bone down my uh, princess seam in the back. And then I'm also going to add another bone, which is actually going to be a wriggly bone that's going to have my corset loops on it that will help the uh, corset part of the back not buckle too. But that will be in part three. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for part three where I'll show you guys how we finish off the dress. In the meantime, make sure to check out some of these other DIY wedding dress videos, subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, and I'll see you guys in my next one.